Welcome back to another episode of Sacred Wild Man. My name is Roy. Today's topic is the Madonna Whore Complex and the Dark Masculine Nice Guy Complex. Now, the Madonna Whore Complex is real. It's attributed to Freud. And basically how he framed it is that this Madonna Whore Complex exists in the psyche of men where there is a splitting in the unconscious of these men. And that split is said to develop in men who see women as either saintly Madonnas or debased prostitutes, according to Wikipedia. Now, this complex, as well as the dark masculine nice guy complex, in my opinion, exists in both women and men because we are mirrors unto each other. And so it's important to hit on both of these in order to develop a, I would say, well-rounded understanding of our subconscious, unconscious motivations and struggles. Now, why this one is interesting to me, these complexes, is because something that I've noticed in my work and something that I just noticed in myself in my own journey of stepping more into my masculine core is that for both men and women there is a huge split there's a huge fragmentation within our unconscious regarding our sexuality and our sensuality what i seem to notice in many of the men that i have worked with is that there is an utter fascination and lust for sex and at the same time inability to express that or ask for that from their woman. And the same happens in the reverse. Women know that there is an aspect of this within themselves and perhaps it shows up in their dreams or some waking fantasies or certain movies, rom-coms and erotic novels and poetry that they read. They bathe in this erotic sensuality and sexuality but never really express that to their male partner for fear of perhaps being viewed as slutty or whorish or a prostitute so what happens collectively then for people who are very much split and fragmented in this complex or complexes is that we're doing this dance and nobody's being honest about what they actually want, what they truly desire. And looking around broadly here in the West, I think this is responsible for then what we see as what people have called the new drug, porn addiction, primarily for men, but for some women as well. Then you have the hookup culture, casual sex, which there's no such thing. And you have the uprise of polyamorous relationships and open relationships. In my opinion, these are all ways in which people are attempting to work out the shadow of their split and fragmented unconscious of the Madonna horror complex of the dark masculine nice guy complex. And they're going about it in ways which don't actually address the root. And so people are playing this game, people are doing this dance, but in the end, they're still actually starving for what they truly want. This topic fascinates me because it's something that I've wrestled within myself for a good period of time. And it's very much tied into my passion in men's issues. Because for a long time, I struggled, sometimes still do, but it's changing. For a long time, I struggled to own my masculine core, my masculine edge, and to even express my dark masculine desires or just that energy. And so that complex, that split existed within me, and it exists for a lot of men and women. One thing that struck me before I share a little bit about some of my personal issues and journeys with this complex is that when I was running a group for men who struggle with porn addiction and even with one-on-one -on -one clients 
What I noticed is that these men would be fascinated with sex. But in the realm of pornography, that was the only place in which they could feel that their sexual desires and lust was welcome. And of course, that was true, right? Because you're on a screen looking at women, you have no idea who they are, their stories. All you see is the drama and demonstration and exhibitionism that exists within the realm of pornography, the videos and photos that you look at. And at the same time, there's no one to judge you. It's completely impersonal. Nobody can reach out and touch you. Right? So there's a certain safeguard to it. And so men have learned how to be voyeurs in this regard. They can only feel and express their dark masculine, their desire for the whore split of that complex within the realm of pornography and voyeurism. Or maybe they go into the realm of hiring prostitutes or sex workers or escorts. And hearing some of the stories from these men, I decided to challenge them because, I mean, it's what I do. If, and this was one of the questions I asked in my group for the men struggling with porn addiction, I said, okay, so you can experience a certain sense of feeling welcomed and non-judged in your voyeuristic journeys within pornography. Okay. One example I asked all of them, is there any part of you that would want to specifically with your wife, your girlfriend, is there any part of you that wants to do her doggy style from the back while pulling her hair and spanking her ass? And they're like, yeah, no, I would like to do that. That, that turns me on. I said, okay because I'm guessing they probably enjoy some of those scenes in the pornography they frequent. So I said, all right, let's say you were to bring this to your wife or to your girlfriend. And she said, yes, that she actually would want to experience that from you as well. Then what? And there was one man who spoke up. He said, oh, you know, that would terrify me. That, that would be even worse. And I was like, oh, that's so interesting. Like, like, please tell me more. That even if your wife gave you permission or your fiance, your girlfriend gave you permission to do this, actually wanted it, that that would terrify you even more. Like, like help me understand that. Okay. I don't recall what the explanation was on his end. But I think that's a perfect example of this split in this complex, this fragmentation. There's this need to separate the good and the bad, so there's no integration. And when there's no integration, all of that then exists within the shadows of a person's subconscious. And when people don't deal with their shadows, that leaves them susceptible to being hijacked by the dark forces who would want to utilize those shadows as a means of controlling, as a means of feeding off of people, feeding off of their energy. You don't have to agree with me about that, but it's undeniable in my opinion that such dark realms exist and such energy feeding, feeding off of louche, feeding off of the shadows and unintegrated parts of people is very much in operation within our world at large. Now, this also exists within women. Like I said earlier, we are mirrors unto each other. So the Madonna whore complex, the dark masculine nice guy complex exists within all of us and how we project it onto the opposite sex and how we relate to each other. The way I see this within women is that prime example would be Fifty Shades of Grey. Okay. And Fifty Shades of Grey is this, I believe, worldwide phenomenon 
of how it does, did and continues to do so well with women. There are women who read it religiously. There are women who read erotic poetry religiously. And what's interesting to me is that I can't prove this part, right? Because I didn't look into the stats, but a friend of mine said, Fifty Shades of Grey did tremendously well, especially among conservative Christian women. And in my grad program, which is in counseling psychology, predominantly women, the school and the field, they did a survey. What's the most popular or common book of the alumni there? And lo and behold, Fifty Shades of Grey. And at a school that is incredibly influenced by, I would say, more progressive, liberal strains of thought. Okay, so there's a lot of emphasis about being politically correct, even though that's not said or expressed uh, concretely, but it's there. You can you can feel it. And so I thought to myself, man, this is so fascinating, right? How is it that at my grad program, right, with these women asking for nice men, kind-hearted men, we need to change men, we need men to be better, we need to get rid of toxic masculinity, and then you have your con conservative Christian women, you have women at large being drawn to Fifty Shades of Grey. And I couldn't even get angry at this. I was like, this is so fascinating. The researcher part of me has to just dig into this, into the psyche. What, what the hell is going on? Because <laughs> this is interesting. And so this is where that split and fragmentation exists within women. The part that wants a, perhaps what people have called a Don Juan or a Casanova or whoever, the the gruff man who says goodbye baby rides on his motorcycle with a cigar in his mouth off into the distance into the sunset and she's wondering oh when will he ever come back after they just had a rendezvous and he completely ravished her there's that split and then the woman within the same women the split of Oh no, I, I want a nice guy. I want a guy who cares for me. I want a guy who loves me, who's, who shares his emotions, who cares about my emotions and feelings, who is you know a man I can respect and regard. Right. Fascinating stuff. And once again, it's split. It's fragmented, disintegrated. And so as long as we are disintegrated and fragmented within our consciousness, within our psyches, then the only way we can fulfill those desires and needs and wants is through things that sort of tap into them, but never really give us the full thing. For whatever reason, at least for me, I feel that there's something about integrating this within ourself and then the sacred union of a man and a woman. That's just me. There's something about that where I think these shadows, these splits and fragmentations is where in the container of sacred union between a man and a woman, those fragments are healed. And the unfortunate part is I would say trauma. Trauma will screw up the intuition of both men and women in this regard. Something that I see is a lot of women will, in the same sentence of saying they want you know, a kind or a nice guy, a guy who values her heart, respects her, will find herself in a relationship with very much an unsafe man who doesn't do any of those things. And that is a man who, in which she will open herself emotionally and sexually, only to be wounded, and then ask where are all the good men. 
And there's a lot of ping-ponging back and forth that I see for women where they will go with the dark masculine guy, get hurt, maybe spend a period hating men, and think, all right, well, I just need to find a more passive guy, a nice guy, and that'll solve it. So she goes to the passive, the nice guy, and can experience a lot of empathy being really seen and valued, but she's also not satisfied here. Something about the nice guy, the passive guy, is uh, what you know, women have titled the ick. There's just something ick about it. She's like, all right, you know, I, I got to leave this relationship. Where are all the good, strong men? And then, once again, back to Chad, the dark masculine, the toxic masculine. And then boom, 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 boom. It has, in the end, nothing to do with either of those men. Nothing to do with the Chad, dark masculine guy. Nothing to do with the passive nice guy. That split exists within her. And she's attempting to solve it through controlling external circumstances. Outside people instead of within herself. The same goes for men. Although I don't seem to observe this split within men as much. In the sense that men are going to women who are supposedly more slutty or whorish and be like, all right, you know, that sucked, that's terrible. I need to find a Madonna type woman right, who I can revere, is super saintly. Oh man, I'm not even worthy of you. I don't really see that split within men. But I do see and hear of their frustration because I myself have experienced that. You know, man, I'm such a nice guy. Like, you know, and women saying they want nice guys, they want a kind hearted man who values them. And then I offer that, and then they go off and get their back blown out by Chad. And then they get heartbroken and come back and then want to cry on my shoulders and confide in me. You know what? Fuck that shit. I'm done with that. All right. I, want, I'm, I'm, I guess my only option is to be an alpha Chad douchebag, and that'll get me what I want. And then some men go in that direction potentially get what they want but at the same time they also disconnect from their heart so at this point hopefully you get, can get the sense that well, it's kind of a shit show out there aside from the people who are committed to the work doing the self-work and integration which is very hard aside from those folks it's a shit show out there and people think that's the only Thing that's available this is this is the best that there is this is the only game that there is and so I got to play it right at least that's what the matrix indoctrinated programs control systems want you to think and something else that I see at large is how certain clicks or movements seem to spring out from this and they're still very much split one is you have the new age nice guy stuff, right? These guys who are like, oh, you know, I'm just ultra spiritual, right? Grand rising, soul family. Who in the end really just utilize esoteric spiritual teachings or tantra, Taoist, sexual alchemy to manipulate, to get what they want from women. It's no different. And it's kind of a sad state for me to witness from a distance. You have people who, you know, then settle into these rhythms of, all right, I can only either have polite sex or I can only have junk food sex. Right? Polite sex being, oh, you know, I don't want to be dirty. I don't want to be the dark masculine guy who just asks for what he wants. Well, I don't want to be the woman who, you know, I don't want to be a slut. I don't want to be a whore. You know, I don't want that to be how I'm seen. So we'll just do the polite sex. And then you have the junk food sex, right? Um, which I would say is probably the majority of the sex that exists within the West and perhaps the world at large, right? You just, it's nothing more than 
genital stimulation between two sometimes more people. Right? And, and that's another thing that I see. A rise in open relationships, polyamorous relationships, casual sex, which there's no such thing, hookup culture, where people are just, you know, again, trying to work with that split, but they haven't healed and integrated within themselves. There's not an integrated whole where all these parts are communicating with each other. And so that internalized split and fragmentation manifests out in the external, being split among multiple people, right? Having a rotation of people where one person you're emotionally confiding in and the other you're sexually confiding in and another financially and what have you, right? Whole bunch of fragmentation. What's the solution here? I think first just get honest with yourself. So to the people who are watching this, men and women, is this what you want? Okay. Because if it's what you want, then great, keep doing it. I don't have a problem with that. But if it's not what you want and you're just settling for scraps, in hopes of one day stumbling upon what you've always desired. The good news and the bad news, it's, it's all on you. Right? Because you are the one who has control of the situation by changing how you want to approach it. Okay. W within our literature, within our movies, there's so much around romanticizing these relationships and how they happen, you know. For women, it's like, oh, I just want him to sweep me off my feet. For the guy, it might be, oh, you know, I'm the white knight who comes and saves her. But a lot of that isn't based in reality. A lot of that is just based on sort of these temporary whimsical feelings in which, oh, we feel the butterflies. In reality, it's, it's a lot less glamorous sometimes. Sometimes it starts out as friendships. Sometimes it starts out as friendships and then two people you know they go off to find different lovers and then they realize no we actually loved each other all along and they come back it's not clean it's not clear cut but those stories don't really make it onto the screen so much or into our literature and so another piece of this is to begin questioning your beliefs around how relationships should happen and how Section se se sexuality and sensuality ought to happen. And then beginning to work with integrating these splits. So for both men and women, asking yourselves whether that's worth a coach, therapist, healer, whoever it is, a support group, excavating and examining what are my desires what do i want what am i afraid to want what it, what do i believe i can't have but i then go into the shadows to try to find what would be the cost of then integrating these things to say yes this is a part of me How would that change how you begin to interact with others in relationship? The talk around divine partnerships or sacred unions, marriage, the coming together, in my belief, my conviction, that is only reserved for people who have done the work who have gone through the trials and fires and the rites of passage and initiation to heal the fragmented parts of themselves, to bring them back together, to have a round table where we can all talk and say, hey, this is part of me, this is a part of me too, and this is a part of me. It, I don't see there being any other way. And so if that's a relationship model, sacred union or conscious relationships, whatever buzzword is out there, then it starts with being incredibly honest with ourselves and then incredibly honest with our partners or the people we are dating or courting. 
It's like, hey, this, this is true for me. And this is something I would like to experience with you. Now, are you someone who can hold room for this? Does a man inspire that trust within you as a woman? And does that woman show to you as a man that she is willing to be obliterated by your love in the sense that there's no more games of trying to get control or to acquire a sense, a false sense of safety. But she is completely enabled and willing to surrender into your love. These are the important things to be asking ourselves and to be gauging in a partner. And I think I, that's all I have to say about that. Uh, for, for whatever reason, it's something I'm, I'm quite passionate about because part of it is my own deep desire for relationship, partnership, communion, a sacred divine relationship, a sacred union with a woman who is able to meet me halfway in which we're both honest and committed to ourselves and to each other, committed to our integrity. And just looking out broadly with my clients, with other people's stories that I hear, there is clearly a palpable feeling of deep longing that people have. And sometimes I ache, I ache when I hear their stories because I think, there's so much more that's possible for you. And sure, you can blame other men, you can blame other women. But honestly, it starts with you. And to the men and women out there who feel discouraged. Well, it's like, I, I've already done all the work. I've done all the work and it's still not happening for me. I get that. I totally get that. And the piece that I keep coming back to is holding the pose, remaining grounded and rooted within myself. This is my commitment to myself. It's the most radical act of self-love and compassion I can have. It's to not waver on what I know is true to me because I can settle for all those other scraps, right? I could go back to pornography. I could buy and purchase a whole bunch of sex dolls trying to simulate the real thing. I could try to inject myself into a metaverse and pretend I'm in some meta orgy but in the end, these are only symbolic representations of the energy is that's of the energy that is there. So, so another piece to hit on is that just because you might have these fantasies, whether it's in your dreams or waking fantasies, because apparently you know some women have fantasies of being gang banged, or men have fantasies of dominating multiple women, having a harem. Right? I get it. I've had that fantasy before. But I don't think it's actually about acting out on certain fantasies as some people think. I think it's more so about the symbology and the energy behind them. So if we're just to look at the symbology and energy of these fantasies, say for a man who wants to be the head man of a harem, many, many women, it probably isn't so much about his desire to have a whole bunch of women, but more so his ability to feel powerful, powerful in his masculinity, powerful in his cock, his male sexual expression of here I am and this is who I am. And I feel powerful and potent in the world as represented by the number of women within my harem, that he is fully able to offer his gift to the world in his masculinity. It's probably more about that. And then for the woman who has sexual fantasies of being gangbanged, it's probably not so much about being gangbanged by a whole bunch of men as it is potentially to feel fulfilled, to feel able to surrender and be completely obliterated by love in particular perhaps from a man, 
from the strong masculine, from the integrated masculine who owns his darkness, his dangerousness, and also is connected to his heart. And so the wedding of the two within himself is then a mirror to the wedding in which she desires that within herself, that she is, yes, both the Madonna and the whore. She owns both aspects of herself, and it doesn't make her any less, make her any more dirty, because those two parts within her consciousness and within her psyche are touching. Okay? It makes her more integrated, more of a complete woman, just as it does make the man a more integrated, complete man within himself. Because those parts are together now. They're in communication. They're not at war with each other, calling each other inappropriate or dirty. So that's all I have to say about the Madonna whore complex and the dark masculine nice guy complex. It's a journey to integrate and bring those aspects of ourselves together. There's definitely many more splits and archetypes to speak to, but this is one that I see coming up a lot just in conversation with my clients and also in my own journey. Right? A big part of why I started Sacred Wild Man is because I had this strong realization that I am not at all integrated in my masculine core or my dark masculine, the part of me that is connected to his ability to kill and be dangerous and also connected to his primal lust for sex and his passion there. That was all suppressed and repressed. And of course, it comes out and it came out in the shadows with porn addictions, with fantasies within my dreams that were like, wow, this is, uh, this is not appropriate, right? You know, this is, this is not clean or this is not godly. You know, this is not good. This is not holy. And many people live this way, unintegrated, fragmented. And part of it is also our culture does nothing to speak to these things. Right? It, in fact, probably encourages them because then there are shadows in which they can hijack your energy, your consciousness, money. There's money to be made off of you when you're unintegrated and you are acting out in your shadows. So once I made that change within myself, and I continue to commit to this. This is my commitment to my heart and my integrity to integrate all aspects of myself. The more that I've wedded my more nice guy heart-centered part and my dark masculine part, the more whole I feel. And that this comes across more in my interactions with people. And my ability to interact with women has shifted because of this. So that's all I have to share for you today. If you have any comments or questions, I'd love to hear them. Oftentimes, I think I tend to do better when there's questions and interaction engagements, sort of like a podcast. Uh, otherwise, I can be rambling uh, for quite some time. So I'll leave it here, and I'll see you in the next video.